Hey everyone, my name is Chris Anderson, and I'm at one of my favorite places in Cleveland, Cuyahoga Valley National Park. The entire park is filled with beautiful forests and rich local history. But have you ever wondered, how was this valley created? Well today, we're going to learn about the park's amazing geologic features and how they were formed over millions of years. Let's start with this dark layer of rock called shale. It's around 360 million years old. If we got in a time machine and went back then, this place would look completely different. Instead of a forest full of trees, we'd be in the middle of a warm, shallow sea. This ocean was filled with silt, very fine, small particles, and it was inhabited by a bunch of different creatures that looked like they came out of a science fiction movie. There were armored trilobites that looked like scary horseshoe crabs, weird seashell-looking creatures called brachiopods, and even the first sharks patrolled these seas. But most terrifying of all, was Dunkelostis. These guys were terrifying. Their body was covered in bony plates of armor and they grew up to 20 feet long. Their jaws had enough force to crush an entire car. Dunkelostis ruled these seas, eating pretty much anything they wanted, including each other. Over millions of years, those silty particles slowly settled down to the bottom of the ocean and formed this layer of shale right here. This is the oldest layer of rock in Cuyahoga Valley National Park. It's a very dark rock that comes off in little sheets, which are quite brittle. You can still feel the gritty silt from an ocean 360 million years ago. Let's fast forward 20 million years. In that time, two tectonic plates, the Africa plate and the North American plate, began colliding to form the supercontinent Pangaea. We're talking about Huge pieces of rock weighing trillions of tons crashing into one another. When two plates converge, the force pushes the surrounding rock up. It's the same collision that created the Appalachian Mountains. Geologists call this uplift, and it changed the warm, shallow sea that was here into a sandy shore. After millions of years of sand being washed onto that ancient shore, it formed this layer of sandstone. You can see the lines in the rock as the sand was deposited over millions of years. The sandstone was formed after the shale. So the shale is on the bottom and the sandstone is right on top. Shale, sandstone, shale, sandstone, shale, sandstone. Fast forward another 30 million years to 310 million years ago. The colliding plates continue to push this area upwards. What was once a sandy shore is now a rushing river ecosystem. The river brought with it gravel and pebbles eroded away from the nearby mountains. This formed a layer of rock called conglomerate. Now conglomerate is a type of rock that contains a bunch of smaller rocks stuck together. Those rocks were washed off the sides of the mountains and carried here by a huge river until they got stuck in the sediment. So in this rock layer, you can see the pebbly sand from a river 310 million years ago. The conglomerate formed after the sandstone. So when we look at the rock record, the shale is on the bottom because it's the oldest, then the sandstone, then the conglomerate because it's the youngest. Shale, sandstone, conglomerate. Shale, sandstone, conglomerate. When you look at the rock record, the oldest rocks are on the bottom and the youngest rocks are on the top. Geologists call this the law of superposition. It's science! Shale, sandstone, conglomerate. Let's recap. 360 million years ago, Cuyahoga Valley was a warm, shallow, silty sea and formed that layer of shale. By 340 million years ago, that sea was a sandy shore and it formed the sandstone layer right on top of the shale. On top of that, a 310 million year old layer of conglomerate shows the traces of an ancient river system. But after that, we don't see any other layers of rock. Just dirt that's been formed in the last few thousand years. So where did all those rock layers go? And how did the valley form? Well, the answer to both those questions is erosion, or specifically, erosion from glaciers. When glaciers expand during an ice age, they scrape away the rock beneath them. Over the last few million years, there have been dozens of ice ages. Each time, the glaciers scrape away more and more rock, leaving us with a gap in the geologic record. It's why we can't see any rock layers younger than 300 million years in Cuyahoga Valley. It's all been scraped away. 
You can see evidence of these glaciers by checking out some of the rocks in the park. This piece of granite was carried here by the glaciers. When the earth warmed up and the glaciers melted, they left the rock behind. Each glacier carved a groove in the land, which helped form the Cuyahoga Valley and the Great Lakes, including Lake Erie. The valley was then drained by the Cuyahoga River, which eroded the valley to the state that it is today. So this valley has been here for a long time, and this is just the latest version. One day, another ice age will move through and change the Cuyahoga Valley once again. Isn't that wild? And that is the geologic story of how Cuyahoga Valley National Park was formed. Next time you visit, see if you can identify the different rock layers and what they tell us about the world millions of years ago. Impress your friends. But when you visit, remember, we have to protect this park for everyone, forever. That means staying on mark trails and not disturbing the ecosystem. Oh, and make sure you pick up all your trash and recycle your waste when you can. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you learned a little bit about how Cuyahoga Valley was formed and that you're as excited to visit this park as I am.